Today with Joseph Prince. Eternal life starts the moment you are born again, the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, as your Lord. You confess Him as Lord. You believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead. You believe that Christ took your sins at the cross the moment you are born again. I just want to share with you a testimony that came in. And uh, during this time of the, ep- the, the pandemic that's upon us, it's vital that we memorize, not just uh, read through once a while, but really mem- memorize and meditate on Psalms 91. I really believe Psalms 91 has all the fingerprints of God for such a time as this. Even in America, all right, Psalms 911, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. 911 is an emergency call number in America, right? And we know what happened. The world changed after 9-11 as well. And uh, I know that uh, uh, chapters and divisions are not inspired, but I know that God, God can just, you know, God can just uh, work through them. You know, God is sovereign and God can do it in such a time. He knows what's going to happen in the future. And it so happens that Psalms 91 is a psalm of protection. And it's a New Testament psalm, even though it was uttered uh, many years ago. Some believe by David, some believe by Moses. I believe it was David. But nonetheless, you will find that 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 psalm is so relevant to the times that we live in. Amen. It opens up by saying, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it talks about how surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Surely, not maybe, surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Any trappings that the devil has in the future, God has God promised that He will deliver you. Surely He will deliver you. So as we meditate on this psalm, you know, it's going to rescue us from fear, worry and anxiety during this time, during this pandemic. Just the other day, I was, I was listening to the news and, and just for a moment, anxiety rose in my heart. Just a little a flitting fear rose in my heart and then the verse came to my rescue from Psalms 91. It says, You will not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day. And listen, you shall not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Now, pestilence that walks in darkness, you don't even know it exists. Amen? It's walking in darkness. You don't even know it's there. It's in darkness. Right? It's walking in darkness. Surely He shall deliver you from the perilous pestilence. The Bible says uh, the Lord will take away from you all diseases. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says He will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, of Egypt represents the world, upon you. Now friend, all the promises of God in Christ is yes and amen. We say amen to it. So I want to encourage you to memorize Psalms 91. Get your kids to memorize Psalms 91. You know, uh, the other day I was reading a story of a, uh, a true story of a man, a, a colonel uh, from the British regiment who served during the World War I. This is World War I that lasted for four years. His name is Colonel Whittlesey. And uh, he was in, uh, in charge of uh, a British regiment in the front lines. So for four years, he served in the front line with his uh, regiment. And regiment is about a few hundred men. But what he did was he's a devout Christian and he had his men carry with them a, a placard or something uh, uh, that has Psalms 91 on it. He made them memorize, memorize it. And not only that, he made them quote it every day. They had to quote it at least once. Amen. Memorize it and, and quote it by memory or, or declare it as they read it, but they had to memorize it. And, uh, and, and they, they would do it every day. They would recite it. Do it in the course of these four years of World War I, there's not a single casualty in his regiment. Not a single one. With all the bombs dropping and, you know, with all the, the, the chaos and carnage going on around them, just like Psalm 31 says, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. Even the COVID-19, we are listening every day to, to not just a few hundred, but around the world, thousands, thousands, thousands. You know, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. The promise in Psalms 91. Do you feel stuck in a cycle of defeat? Have you tried countless ways to overcome stress and fear in your life, but still feel overwhelmed? My friend, God wants to bring you to a place of victory. This month, for your gift of any amount, we're giving you Joseph's two sermon series, Condemnation Kills, But the Spirit Gives Life. 
Let's get to the root of defeat in your life and break out of this cycle for good. Your gift goes directly to reaching even more people who need to hear the gospel of grace. Offer available to U.S. and Canada residents only. So get our children to memorize Psalms 91. Amen. Get them to, to uh, uh, memorize it. It's not that long. You can memorize it. And uh, during times like what I experienced just now, the fear that rose in my heart when I heard that news, surely the Word of God comes, you know, rises up and, and, and banish that fear by saying that you will not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Here is my eight-year-old son, Justin, reciting Psalms 91 from memory. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen! Praise God. Amen. So get our children to memorize Psalms 91. And I, I want to encourage you, you yourself, memorize Psalms 91. And it's amazing how at the right time, you know, you hear a report saying that more people are, are, are dying young or, or, you know, the, the age span for, uh, uh, for people in this, in this uh, uh, part of the world is, is around you. Surely the word, the word of God will come to you and say, with long life will I satisfy Him. So the criteria for long life is based on your satisfaction. With long life will I satisfy him. If he's not satisfied at 70, he can go on to 80. He's not satisfied at 80, he can go on to 90. Not satisfied at 90, he can go on, hey, go all the way to where Moses was at 120. The Bible says when Moses died, his eyes was not dim nor his natural force abated. Yet, if we look at the scriptures, you find that 120 is the age that God actually says in Genesis, where God says, My spirit will not always strive with man, yet he is flesh, but his days will be 120. So what happened then was that man lived hundreds of years. Amen. In fact, uh, uh, Adam himself lived uh, 900 over years, short of a number of years before 1,000. But you see, God said to Adam, the day that he sinned, he will die. And I want to share this today with all of you. Um, God has been showing me some things from the Word in regards to death and how God hates death and how God wants His people in these last days to live a long, good life. Amen. Yes, a long, good life. Praise the Lord. With long life will I satisfy Him. My friend, the Bible teaches us there are some things that we do that can shorten our life. In the book of Proverbs, for example, it says the fear of the Lord. And we know the fear of the Lord is defined by our Lord Jesus in the wilderness temptation as the worship of God. The more you worship God, the worshipful fear of the Lord prolongs days. It will prolong your days. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says there are certain things you do that will shorten your days. Amen. The Bible says honoring your parents, your days will be long upon the earth, not in heaven upon the earth. Amen. And, and, and you know of cases, like, even like in front of the Bible, Samson who dishonored his parents, he died young. You know, and, and uh, the Bible promises, not just God's statement, God doesn't have to promise. God's word alone is enough. God cannot lie. Not that He will not lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. But when God promised, there's a double ironclad guarantee is going to happen. Amen, my friend. So God never meant for man to die. It's not His heart. It's not His dream for man to die. In fact, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
The wages of sin is death. Hey, quit before payday. Wages of sin is death. But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, eternal life does not start after your heart stops beating. Eternal life starts the moment you are born again, the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. You confess Him as Lord. You believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead. You believe that Christ took your sins at the cross. The moment you are born again, amen, at that very moment, eternal life. Eternal life is a quality of life that God lives by. And Jesus Himself said to Martha at the tomb of her brother Lazarus, He says, whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So for a believer, even if he, his heart stops beating, amen, he lives, he lives forever, amen. Death is just putting off like, put, if I put off my jacket right now, it falls on the floor, but I'm still alive, amen. So death is just putting off the body of corruption anyway. And the Bible says either way, through the rapture, if Jesus comes for us and we don't see death, amen, or if we put off the, our mortal flesh, the Bible says that uh, we'll be clothed, amen, with a glorious, incorruptible body. And that's what we look forward to in the rapture when Jesus comes for us. The Bible says, lift up your heads, your redemption, and that redemption there is your bodily redemption. So friend, I believe that there are secrets in the Bible that teaches us that we can live a long, good life. You know, the Bible tells us that twice it tells us about the the terminal generation, the final generation that will see the rapture. And we really believe that we are that generation. I believe that the coming of the Lord Jesus is soon. I believe the rapture can take place at any time, friend. And what is the rapture? Nothing more than us in a twinkling of an eye. Our bodies are changed, amen, into a glorified body. Amen. They will never grow old, never decay, never have disease, never have pain, never feel boredom, never feel anything that is a fallen right? But a glorified body forever. You'll be forever young, forever healthy, forever strong. Forever is a long time, my friend. And that's what we are looking forward to when Jesus comes again and He can come anytime. In fact, what is happening around the world right now is unprecedented, amen, in modern times and it's global. So we know that God is sending a message to the earth. Though He's not the one who sent COVID-19, God is allowing this to happen because uh, of all the, the sins of the world. The Bible tells us the creation uh, the creation groans because of man's sin. You know, when man sin, there is a, uh, uh, you know, it's unseen, but there is like a vibration. Uh, I, I can't explain it, but uh, uh, it seems like the earth responds when man sin against God. The earth, like when, 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 when the Bible says that uh, Adam sin against God, God says the ground will bring forth thorns and thistles. It will, it will no longer yield to you its strength. The same thing to uh, Cain who murdered his brother Abel. God says the ground will not yield its strength to you. So there's a double curse on the ground now. The ground, the Bible says in Romans 8, creation groans and travails because of man's sin. And it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. And I believe with all my heart that we are going to see Jesus come in our generation. Amen. I believe the rapture is imminent. It can happen anytime. But there is a beautiful verse that occurs twice, a, a, a phrase that occurs twice. In pertaining to the rapture, it says that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Notice it says, we who are alive. It's one thing to be alive because you are 10 years old. Amen. You are young. You are 20 years old. You are 30 years old. But it's another thing to be alive and remain. Remain alive denotes strength, denotes power to stay alive. Amen. Which means the end time generation that will see Jesus in the rapture, okay, will be a generation that will have a secret to, uh, to uh, overcoming death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe that. I believe we need to be open to what God is doing at this time. And it's repeated again, then we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not precede them who have gone before. Amen. They will go up first and then we'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. So soon and very soon, we'll see the King face to face. Hallelujah. Are you ready? If you're not ready, you can be ready in an instant. You can be ready. Amen. I don't believe in conversion. I believe in being born again. It will take God. It will take a miracle of a new birth. Amen. To, to go from darkness to light. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. The moment you put your trust in Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that He took all your sins at the cross. Confess Him with your mouth and believe in your heart. Say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and believe in your heart that He died for your sins and that He was raised from the dead for your justification. God has justified you freely without your works. You cannot lift one finger to save yourself. And that's why I don't believe in conversion. Amen. Conversion denotes man's, man's will. Amen. Involved in that. No, no. It's born again. God, God caused a miracle to be birthed in you. It's called the new birth. You are born again with the nature of God in you, with the life of God. Amen. Flowing through you. Amen. Praise God. Then it behooves us to ask the question, why is it that we see like death overtakes believers so easily? Why is it that death takes, overtakes believers uh, so easily? Now, I'm not, I'm not I'm talking about uh, the people of the world. Amen. It's obvious. The wages of sin is death. But believers who have eternal life in them, this should not be the experience. Amen. Now, I don't claim to know everything, but what I know, I'm going to share with you. Amen. And there's some things that the Lord has been showing me. I just want to bless you with. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us very clearly in the Scriptures that the ministry of death is written and engraved on stones. Now, I want to tell you something about the law. The Bible says believers, those who have belief on Christ, we are not under law. We are under grace. Now, how is law defined? Law is defined as man working, man laboring. How is grace defined? Grace is defined as God working, God supplying. Amen. So either you are supplying yourself, you are providing for yourself, you are working for yourself, you are, you are laboring to produce result, or God is working. You choose. Amen. Now, you will say that, is there nothing for me to do? Yes, belief. Belief. Now, when God is working in, for you, God will also work, if you live under grace, God will also work in you and through you, and then you just follow after Him. Like right now, you can say, I'm laboring, isn't it? I'm laboring to preach the Word of God to you, but yet, I'm conscious that it's God who is working in me, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. I believe that God is working for me, God is working in me, and God is working through me, amen, to produce the results that He wants produced in your lives, amen. So even that becomes a life of rest, amen. Amen. That's a believer's life. In all his labor, outwardly he's busy. Amen. But inwardly he's at rest. It's like the, the tabernacle of Moses, which is the first, uh, what we call the habitat of God, that God told men to create, like the first temple, but it was a mobile temple in the desert. When the children of Israel wandered for 40 years, the Bible tells us that God told them to build him a tabernacle, a Mishkan in Hebrew, where he would dwell in the Holy of Holies. So there are three compartments to the, to the tabernacle of Moses. And the first part is the outer court. Okay? And there you have sunlight, natural light. Amen? And that speaks of the people of the world. You know, they have natural light. What they, they see, what they believe science can tell them. Right? And, uh, but then it's very limited because you are confined based on what you see. And what you see is very limited. Because there's an unseen realm. Amen. It wasn't until not too long ago only, in fact, modern time, that people discover atoms that you cannot see. But yet, every uh, particle of substance is made from these atoms that you can't see. Amen. And now the world is at a standstill because of something they can't see. Yes, they can see it ultimately under a microscope or whatever. I'm just referring to naturally. We cannot be confined with our natural eyes. That's all I'm saying. Amen. And uh, we, we see that that God wants us to, to uh, walk by faith and not by sight because there's a reality beyond this reality. Amen. The Bible says the things that we see are temporal. Amen. Think about it. Everything that you can see here, this pulpit, this chair, and anything, any building you see, is, is temporal. In a matter of time, it will decay. It will, it will, it will become rubble. It will, it will dissipate, you know? But, but the things that cannot be seen, amen, with me on the stage right now are angels, amen. We can't see them, all right? But they are there. The Holy Spirit is in me. You can't see Him, but I know He's there, amen. God is with me, praise the Lord. I can't see Him, but I know He's there, praise the Lord. And you know what? The things you cannot see, the Bible says, are eternal, amen. That's why your body, this body here, is not eternal. In fact, when Jesus comes again, we'll have a glorified body, a body that will live forever. Anything you can see, 
is temporal. That's good news. That's good news. That means even the, the tumor that you can see on the x-ray is temporal. But God's promise of healing is eternal. Amen? But people say, you know, I, I cannot believe what I can't see. My friend, you've got it wrong because of Adam's fall. Know that you are in an a unnatural state. Reverse yourself. Believe. Believe. Amen? Walk by faith because God meant for man to walk by faith and not by sight, which limits you drastically. Amen? So here we go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We got to live a life of rest and, and you move into the holy place. There is the light from the lampstand, the menorah. And that's the picture of the church of Jesus Christ. Today, that's where we are right now. We are living in a time when the church of Jesus Christ is shining the light upon this world. This world that is in darkness. Amen. This world, God has compassion for this world. You know, man's thoughts towards God are thoughts of rebellion, uh, uh, thoughts of uh, unbelief, but God's thoughts towards man are thoughts of love, pity, and compassion. God's posture towards man is to save man and not to, to, to bring man to destruction. Even in the Old Testament, when God had to judge, the Bible says in Lamentations uh, chapter 3, verse 33, that God does not afflict willingly. It says, God does not afflict willingly nor grief the children of men. He does it with an unwilling heart, even though he's just and he has to punish sin. But he does it not with a willing heart. Amen? So here, here we see uh, the tabernacle. Finally, uh, we go on to the Holy of Holies where God's presence dwells right in the Holy of Holies. And there you don't find the lampstand. There you don't find the sunlight. There you find Shekinah glory, the brightest light ever. Amen. The presence of God lights up the place. Amen. And that's where we are moving into, people. Our next, our next uh, uh, destination, amen, for all of us believers is, is to step into that Shekinah glory. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So friend, if you're a believer, eternal life is already in you. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Now I will share with you that whatever you do, friend, work from that rest inside you or else you'll be stressed. And uh, if, you, if you are stressed, it's going to have an effect on your body. It may cause you to grow old. It'll cause you to have uh, 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 problems with uh, 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 like your mental disorders. And, and also uh, some diseases can be traced back to stress. And that's been proven. Medically, it's proven that there are quite a number of diseases. You can trace it back to stress, like high blood pressure, amen, heart troubles, and many others. And uh, friend, if we can settle the, in our hearts to be at rest, you know, God said to me many years ago, when you rest, God works. When you work, God rests. And yet, does that mean we do nothing? No. Like I said, all those people that are in the temple, those who are outside, working under the sunlight, they were killing the animals, putting them on the altar of sacrifice, amen, worshipping God, washing. They were busy, amen, all right? So that's a picture of our bodies because the Bible says, no, you're not. Your bodies are the temple of God. So we look at the temple of God. Outside is busy, amen? Even the temple of Solomon, outside is busy. That's where the animals are being sacrificed. That's where a lot of work is going on. But inside the temple, Inside the Holy of Holies, there's perfect peace. There's stillness. There is perfect shalom. Blessed by what you've seen today? Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel and never miss a single episode. New videos released daily that will encourage and empower you to live a victorious life. 